Marjorie Daw by Thomas Bailey Aldrich. 1. Dr. Dillon to Edward Delaney, Esquire, at the Pines, near Rye, New Hampshire, August 8, 1872. My dear sir, I am happy to assure you that your anxiety is without reason. Fleming will be confined to the sofa for three or four weeks, and will have to be careful at first how he uses his leg. A fracture of this kind is always a tedious affair. Fortunately, the bone was very skillfully set by the surgeon who chanced to be in the drug store where Fleming was brought after his fall, and I apprehend no permanent inconvenience from the accident. Fleming is doing perfectly well physically, but I must confess that the irritable and morbid state of mind into which he has fallen causes me a great deal of uneasiness. He is the last man in the world who ought to break his leg. You know how impetuous our friend is ordinarily. What a soul of restlessness and energy, never content unless he is rushing at some object, like a sportive bull at a red shawl, but amiable withal. He is no longer amiable. His temper has become something frightful. Miss Fanny Fleming came up from Newport, where the family are staying for the summer, to nurse him. But he packed her off the next morning in tears. He has a complete set of Balzac's works, twenty-seven volumes, piled up near his sofa, to throw at Watkins whenever that exemplary serving man appears with his meals. Yesterday I very innocently brought Fleming a small basket of lemons. You know it was a strip of lemon peel on the curbstone that caused our friend's mischance. Well, he no sooner set his eyes upon those lemons than he fell into such a rage as I cannot adequately describe. This is only one of his moods, and the least distressing. At other times he sits with bowed head, regarding his splintered limb, silent, sullen, despairing. When this fit is on him, and it sometimes lasts all day, nothing can distract his melancholy. He refuses to eat, does not even read the newspapers. Books, except as projectiles for Watkins, have no charms for him. His state is truly pitiable. Now, if he were a poor man with a family depending on his daily labor, this irritability and despondency would be natural enough. But in a young fellow of twenty-four, with plenty of money and seemingly not a care in the world, the thing is monstrous. If he continues to give way to his vagaries in this manner, he will end by bringing on an inflammation of the fibula. It was the fibula he broke. I am at my wit's end to know what to prescribe for him. I have anesthetics and lotions to make people sleep and to soothe pain. But I've no medicine that will make a man have a little common sense. That is beyond my skill. But maybe it is not beyond yours. You are Fleming's intimate friend, his fetus Acates. Write to him. Write to him frequently. Distract his mind. Cheer him up. And prevent him from becoming a confirmed case of melancholia. Perhaps he has some important plans disarranged by his present confinement. If he has, you will know, and will know how to advise him judiciously. I trust your father finds the change beneficial? I am, my dear sir, with greatest respect, etc.